rug cleaning complement my existing business? Is this something that's going to fit? I'm an on-location cleaner. I now want to get into rug And take a look at how where wall-to-wall -wall carpet sales are down. Off the soft the weekend, Saturday, that's when you do your nails, isn't it? That's, nail. that's nail day. <laughs> so, working five days a week, charging $3 a square foot, that's $81,250 per year. If you sell pad on just one of those rugs per week at $1.50 a square foot, that gives you another $8,100. If you do some urine decontamination, Again, only one rug a week. We know it's going to be a lot more than that, but let's be conservative here in our business plan. At a dollar a foot, which also I think is conservative, there's $5,400. Sell a little rug protector a couple times a week at 50 cents a square foot of their rug business requires urine decontamination. I've got my lavalier. There it is. I have to have that visible of a rug plant on a main floor. You want to make sure that it it works in your budget. This path is giving me this slide with his approval. Master Rug Cleaner program is we show you all different ways to do things. We don't try to sell any particular system so that when you see all these systems, then you can go back to your facility and say, okay, that will work for me and that will work for me, but that won't. So it's good to go and see it all in, in action and then decide what's going to work well for you has their office, a workroom, above the dry room, they're able to dust buckling of a machine-made rug, a Wilton bordered rug, some of the new production from Persia, leads, um, animal accidents, all of these things can create problems that we need to be able to respond to. Now the good news is we're not cleaning on location, we have them in our shop, however humble it is, our garage, our carport, so if we do have dye bleeding or whatever it happens to be, we can hopefully then fix that problem before the customer sees it. my plant. Um, the one on the left, here on the left, is a Wilton bordered rug. Now that rug is made out of wool. And so one would say, well, we just have to get out. Okay. One has to get out our wool safe detergent and just go to town. But if you don't understand construction, which is a part of rug ID, is construction, then that's what happens to you. Now, I knew that was going to happen, but the rug was so dirty that I had to wash it. But then I have the ability to block it, but that's a lot of work. This one here is a contemporary Persian rug. It looks like... Uh, that big rug on the far end that's hanging on the Centrum Force dry rack, it's a Persian Kashan. It guaranteed to bleed. So we know that ahead of time and we, when we take action. But that was on our wash floor just before we put it into the bore machine. This is a rug from Morocco. And just about the only time that people own these is because they've taken a trip to Morocco. There's really nobody that sells them. You can probably buy them on the internet. But most of the time they're on a trip. These will bleed instantaneously when water gets on them and you'll never be able to fix it. This happened to be one where the, it was brand new and the cat urinated on it and they brought it in to see if we could do anything and we, we can't. But it bleeds instantly. One time I had one that was brand new here is a old Persian Hariz that was worn to the foundation and has been overpainted by unscrupulous dealers to make it not look worn so that they can sell it for more money and it's not color fast. So again, this is a rug that is a combination of dye bleed and urine in my plant. If that's not gross, I don't know what is. But again, one has to be careful when you put rugs into any kind of a soaking system. You can't take every rug that was ever made and put it into one of those pits and think you're going to come out unscathed because it's not true. I know. <laughs> <laughs> My 
My key words are don't panic. <laughs> so this is why training is important so we know when to hold them and when to fold them. On some of the tribal rugs from Persia, or not even tribal rugs, but they seem to be a current problem, new productions. You saw a picture of earlier, this is a different one, that the whole thing is all that blue, that wasn't there before it was cleaned. That's, that's new. All the yellow, that's new. So that rug is... New as in you put it on there? Rugs from Persia. And Persia has been considered historically to be the benchmark of oriental rugs in terms of colors and design and so forth. But as more and more people are buying rugs, it's also putting some pressure on rugs. So people are doing things to keep them a little more competitive. And they're not using, I mean, this is just a general statement, but it's, it's a lot of the new per Persian production bleeds. Hamadans that didn't bleed before, they bleed now. Um, and this is one of the newer productions that is a bleeder. That's the wefting. That's the, the, the foundation that goes between each row of knots. And doing a color fastness test on the top isn't going to pick up that that will, could run. And so you, it bleeds up to the front. And you go, there's no purple in this rug. Where did it come from? Well, it came from the wefts. Can be bleeders also. Now, if that rug came into your plant, would that not raise a red flag for you, just looking at the colors? Would that raise anybody's attention? Well, it should. <laughs> it should. There you go. That's the answer go. right there. Yeah. Turn it over. There might be a label that says made in Turkey. <laughs> who, else can, who else can tell me, looking at that, why that rug would be from Turkey? Nathan? The end finish. It's got those braids that are tied together. They hardly do that anywhere but Turkey. So that one thing right there. And then you look at the colors and say, yeah, that's a Turkish rug. And they often do bleed. Do you want us to go ahead with our urine decontamination? Well, we can't deal with the rug. It smells. Sign here, please. And let them know this rug will bleed. Before and after on this Navajo. This is a, a rug from a customer. It's a silk rug from Persia, from Kum. Famous for their, their silk rugs, and the animal did its business, and uh, he sent me a slide, said, can you tell me how to fix this? And uh, he hadn't caused the problem, and the answer was, send it back to the customer, <laughs> because you cannot correct that. Once that blue had let go, it is permanent. So you can. <laughs> the public answer. That's right. Um, here's the thing. If you had two rugs like that that were exactly the same and you could do one and wash it and do the other one not wash it, that would be a valid test as to whether it works. But that isn't what happens in real life. And so people have a tendency, they think if they spray that stuff on a rug that it's going to work. And I've sprayed it and I hadn't seen anything happening that I would put any faith in. So I don't use anything. West, they will take not a dye, but a paint, like a poster paint or a marker pen, and go in and color in the warps and wefts. We have our white cotton warps and wefts. And that is done often without being candid to the customer that the rug is Hello. worn out. That's when you need to have your little antennas go up and get down and have a closer look to see if it's been painted. Because we all know that most of the time, the warp and the weft, that's the foundation, is white cotton. So if the rug is worn down to the foundation, but I can't see any of the white cotton, then the chances of it being painted are good. So then you go get your water and your towel and you spritz it and you wipe. I do it right in front of the customer if they bring it in cash and carry and I spot it, which I always spot it. But I always show it to them right on the spot. I, t I said, the rug's painted, let me check it, and I wipe it, and they're usually aghast. <laughs>